What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of the Wolverine Live Recruiting Show. I'm your host, EJ Holland, alongside me with my co-host, Zach Libby. I don't know what that was, but um, hopefully you guys didn't hear that on my end. It sounded like a movie ad. Um, anyway, uh, we do have a special message from our sponsor, which is basically just uh, ourselves, because we are selling a magazine it is the special commem commemorative edition of the wolverine magazine honoring the 2023 football team the national champions um you know this is a special collector's item it's available in a magazine soft cover or a book hardback over on the wolverine on demand dot uh, the magazine version is 148 full color glossy pages. The book version is 144 ad premium uh, glossy pages. Both versions include in-depth features on JJ McCarthy, Blake Corum, and other stars from the team, exclusive highlights on the dynamic defensive line and path to the championship, comprehensive game-by-game -game coverage, stunning photography, insightful columns, stats, and much more. It's a great gift idea. It's a great keepsake item for all Michigan fans. So order yours today over at the Wolverine on demand .com. So again, make sure to get this. It's a it's a really cool um, thing to have if you are a Michigan fan. All right, Zach, we have a jam-packed show today. We're going to be talking about spring game visitors. Now, there are some recruits coming in. Uh, midweek, including the number one running back in the country in 2026 in Savion Hyder. Um, but the spring game is going to have plenty of talent as well. Um, Zach, Zach, what are you wearing, man? That caught me off guard again. This is now, uh, is that like an American flag slash polka dot black shirt? Polka dot stripes, black stripes. I like I like to be obnoxious with my collared shirt choices, as you can tell from these past four weeks. Okay, well, this is one of the weirder uh, ones yet, but uh, let's talk about spring game visitors and you know a couple of uh, big time targets from the Midwest coming in. Uh, Zach, you've been in contact with both of these recruits recently. Uh, let's start off with uh, top 100 prospects, Nathaniel Marshall and Mark Zachary. What can you tell us about uh, both of those recruits as they are set to come in for the game? Yeah, this is a kid from Chicago land, an area that Michigan has landed at least one signee in every cycle since 2019 um, out of Oak Park High, um, visited twice for the visited Michigan twice this past year, um, including for the Ohio State game. Um, this upcoming visit for the spring game will be his first return this offseason. Um, you know, it's interesting, you know, this the shuffling, I guess, of defensive line coaches this offseason has kind of resulted in uh, plenty of defensive line priorities this cycle, speaking to many coaches. Um, but, you know, the most recent hire with Lou Esposito, um, you know, they've been talking a few times since Esposito was hired in late March. Um, as some Michigan fans know, Esposito has long-standing ties in the Windy City, um, going back to his tenure at Ohio's, I mean, at Western Michigan. Um, you know, head coach Cheryl Moore has also been in contact uh, his school during the winter contact period. Moore, that was actually one of Moore's first stops. So just based on, even though there's been a, I guess, a transition of sorts, so you know, more than one transition at the defensive line coach position, Marshall's priority status for the Wolverines is still intact. And, you know, he's mentioned to you when you went out there to see him out in December, you know, that even before he saw them live, Michigan's defense has been one of the reasons as to why the Wolverines are still are in this race. I mean, specifically, their four two front in terms of just the defensive ends playing in a two point stance. That's actually one of his refer uh, preferences in um, which allows him, you know, I think he mentioned something about scanning the field more easily and just overall production of sending edge players to the NFL, like Aiden Hutchinson um, 
is standing out as well. Um, this visit to Michigan, too, will follow his trip to Miami over this past weekend. And Miami is set to get him for the final OV in June on the 21st. Uh, Alabama most recently also hosted him back in March, and they'll get an OV on the 14th. Um, when I asked Marshall whether Michigan is getting one, he said it's being worked out, but I could see that weekend of May 31st or June 7th being a possibility. Um, Auburn also hosted Marshall, so that could be a school of interest in terms of getting him back on campus. But overall, you know, this spring game visit is just going to be another opportunity to see that edge production under a new coaching staff. Um, you know, he saw that win over Ohio State, but it's going to be his opportunity to see Esposito work with the defensive line as opposed to Mike Elston. Um, but overall, you know, it's great. You know, he's been one of the recruits that we've been talking about for several months in terms of just how much of a priority – Marshall was in for Michigan to bring him back and for them to bring him for a big event like the spring game. That's big. That's huge. Yeah. Um, with Nathaniel Marshall, you know, like Zach said, I've been out to see him and everything, but that was back in the fall. Since then, his recruitment has really taken a turn and you're seeing more Southern programs involved. As Zach said, you know, Auburn has gotten a visit. Alabama is now the leader on the on green prediction machine. Miami is uh, getting the last OV. And so you're seeing a bit of a trend there with schools that have really strong NIL programs. And, uh, you know, that's if that's going to be a big factor in this recruitment, then I'm not super optimistic. With that said, you know, Esposito has put in some good work here and Marshall coming back for the spring game shows he still has legitimate interest, but um, you know, if NIL is a factor, then I wouldn't get my hopes up too much, but uh, Michigan will do its best to move the needle this weekend. Uh, let's talk about the other top 100 Midwest uh, recruit coming in, Mark Zachary. Zach, what can you tell us about Zachary? About yeah. So Zachary, the recruit, not Zachary yourself. I could play cornerback if I wanted to The <laughs> This is a kid from Indianapolis, Ben Davis, one of the powerhouses out there in that city. Um, he comes from the same school as Chris Evans, a former running back from Michigan. This spring game is is going to be the first of two returns for Zachary that's been scheduled. Um, the second one will be a June 14th OV. Um, you know, Michigan back in February landed in Zachary's top four, which also included Notre Dame, Cincinnati, and Florida. Um, you know, Michigan is one of the few schools that Zachary has only visited once. Um, he was there midweek in October during like a fall break. Um, so only seeing them once has kind of um, gotten him excited about seeing more of what Michigan can provide, especially off the field. I mean, this is a kid who really talks about, you know, just development as a person, you know, speaking of education and um, relationship building. You know, on the field, too, you know, I've seen him once. Um, really good change of direction. About six foot, 160. Um, you know, he played a lot of, you know, uh, on-man coverage. When I saw him, has the speed to, um, I guess, attach himself to the hip of opposing wide receivers and cause havoc. He is one that also talks about a lot about Michigan's impact on the defensive back unit and what they did in last season's national title run. And I think just playing for a national title winner is something that intrigues him. Going back to Chris Evans, you know, he's one that regularly goes back to Ben Davis, you know, just to speak with the current um, underclassmen attending there. And Evans has told Zachary multiple times that the operation at Ben Davis, which has won multiple state championships, is basically the same in Michigan. So you're not going to be shell-shocked when you arrive at a school like that. Um, looking at where Michigan stands of that top four, I feel like it's the continued belief that Notre Dame remains out front, as evident by the on-three recruiting prediction machine. But, you know, it's it's there's also the belief, too, that if there's any team to overcome Notre Dame and the seven visits that they have brought – Zachary on campus too in South Bend, it'd be the Wolverines. Um, you know, new Michigan defensive best coach Lamar Morgan has been actively involved in communicating with Zachary and his family, but also every other point that I mentioned in terms of just resources and opportunities that are standing out. 
even Steve Wiltfon, our new on three VP of recruiting and transfer portal, pointed it out in your interview with him earlier this week that Michigan is in contention to, I guess, over overcome what Notre Dame has already done. So this will be a big one just for him to, I guess, find his fit in the defense, get face to face time with Morgan. Wink Martindale, defensive coordinator, and also head coach Cheryl Moore. But overall, I think we're going to know more about where Michigan stands heading into those OVs and afterwards. Yeah, I, I agree with Will Fong. Um, you know, if there's a school that can beat out Notre Dame, it's Michigan. I think Lamar Morgan has quickly built up that relationship here. But, you know, Notre Dame is going to be tough to beat. So this spring game visit will be uh, critical for Zachary and, and obviously Marshall. Um, if you guys uh, would be so inclined, make sure to like this video. Uh, we have uh, more people watching right now than obviously we did at the start of the show. So make sure to like this video, everybody that's funneling in, and also subscribe to our channel for free. I believe we're at 28,300 subscribers. So make sure to hit that subscribe button so we can get to 30K. That is our goal. And also subscribe to thewolverine.com for even more Michigan recruiting intel for just $1 for one month. All right. You know, let's uh, head out to the East Coast, uh, the best coast out here, uh, and talk about a couple of guys that I am familiar with. Um, first one on 300 linebacker, Kamar Archie, set to make a return visit to Michigan. This will be his second of the offseason. Archie was also on campus for Michigan's first recruiting weekend under Sharon Moore um, this winter. Rutgers, the leader on the on three recruiting prediction machine. Um, I'd look, I think Michigan is very well positioned here. Uh, the Wolverines are making Elijah Melendez a uh, top overall priority. Melendez, of course, committed to Miami, but visited over the weekend. Uh, I think Melendez gave reason for optimism coming out of his weekend visit, but I would still say Archie uh, might be the more realistic target, just in the sense that you don't have to deal with Miami's NIL. Um, and also you're not working to flip somebody. Archie is uh, uncommitted with that said, you know, other schools like Clemson and South Carolina are right up there for Archie as well. Um, but this is a kid that kind of fits that Michigan mold, high academic kid, comes from a great uh, school in the in the Northeast, same school that produced Owen Wafel last cycle. So, yeah, I mean, overall, I think Michigan's still, you know, a high, highly regarded school in his recruitment. He has a pre-existing relationship with new linebackers, Coach Brian Jean Mary, who recruited him at Tennessee. So another chance to impress Archie. And, you know, just because there's a ton of buzz around Melendez right now because he's coming off the visit and he's ranked a little higher. Look, I've always been a big fan of Kamar Archie. I've been, you know, beating that drum for a long, long time. I would love to see both end up in the class. Uh, but, you know, e either one would be a massive land for Michigan. Um, another recruit that is slated to come in, from the East Coast is uh, DMV's own Iverson Howard on 300 running back out of Quince Orchard. Uh, with Howard, you know, this is a really intriguing storyline for me because Howard's a guy that I've followed closely for a while. Michigan is the leader on the on three recruiting prediction machine. Uh, I would probably have a prediction in for Michigan right now if we had a little bit more clarity on his situation, which we'll more than likely get following this spring game visit. But remember, Howard was Mike Hart's top target before Hart uh, was no longer with the program. Tony Alford has come in and has completely reset the running back board, you know, uh, making others a, a bit more of a priority. He's gotten Michigan back in contention with Marquise Davis. He's working hard on, uh, you know, Byron Lewis out of Florida, Bo Jackson out of Ohio. So it'll be interesting to see how hard uh, Michigan pushes here for Howard. I think he would be a great running back too, in addition to some of the uh, elite guys that I just mentioned, especially Marquise Davis. So with Howard, there's no doubt he loves the University of Michigan and Sharon Moore has been a personal fan of Howard, but it'll be interesting to see how he clicks with Tony Alford and how much of a priority Alford makes him. Because if Alford does press hard for Howard, I could easily see him 
in the class. And I think that would be quite the dynamic duo if they're able to land Marquise Davis as well. I mean, I, I would really love a combination of Davis and Howard. And uh, I, I would personally press for Howard to be that running back too. And he just, again, he, he's also a guy that fits the Michigan mold. He loves Michigan and he also has an official visit set. So we'll see how things kind of play out after this weekend. All right, Zach, uh, we talked about four key visitors coming in. Um, you know, we have a, a whole list over at the Wolverine.com, but give me uh, one more thing you're looking forward to from a recruiting perspective as you will be at the spring game because, you know, Zach will be on the sideline. He'll be getting scoop. He'll be getting photos. So if you see Zach in one of these ridiculous shirts and apparently a gigantic ring, make sure to say, what's up? Um, I will not be at the spring game. I will be at home manning the ship over at the Wolverine for any recruiting news that comes through. And I'll be also, you know, getting ready for my big fight party. And by big party, I mean just me and my cat as we get ready to watch the Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia fight. Um, and, and we'll be watching the Michigan spring game on TV as well. But Zach, you'll be boots on the ground. What are you looking forward to seeing, um, you know, from a recruiting perspective this weekend? I think one of the major storylines is the fact that not only is Carter Smith going to be there, 2025 quarterback commit, but another commit in four-star defensive lineman, Bobby Kanka. Um, now, if you follow the Wolverine, you know that earlier this week, uh, new defensive line coach Lou Esposito contacted Bobby Kanka and had a prolonged conversation between the pair, um, which follows, obviously, his first return to Ann Arbor this offseason. Um, you know, this is a defense. This is a commit who, you know, kind of had his ma mind made up for a while. Um, you know, he dropped it in late August, but he was always a Michigan lean um, throughout his recruitment. Um, you know, the the turnover on the defensive line staff, I think, uh, I guess, put in wheels in motion. I would say maybe for him to take other visits. Um, you know, he was there. For the Michigan State game, uh, for the Michigan State, uh, you know, if, uh, last week with some of his teammates at Howell High, but the fact that they have he has been in contact with Esposito is good. Um, an opportunity to see how Esposito coaches the defensive line during the spring game is going to be good. But then also we know that Esposito and Shiro Moore will is are expected to be at Howell on Monday, which is when the coaches are going to start um, hitting the road for the spring evaluation. Uh, number one priority in terms of face-to-face -face time with the family is shows that Michigan wants him in the class, is going to make sure that he stays in the class. All right. Uh, Zach froze up a little bit there, but hopefully oh. he's back and, and good. Um, no, yeah, I, I'm interested to see how things play out with, with Bobby Kanka as Michigan resets the defensive board. Remember, on 300 cornerback Dwayne Galloway set to visit midweek. That'll also be an interesting situation. Uh, so defensive board is something that we are tracking. Um, for me, something that I, um, you know, have taken notice of is Ron Bellamy continuing to get top wide receiver talent on campus. Top 100 wide receiver Derek Meadows out of Bishop Gorman is set to make an unofficial visit this weekend. And, you know, Bellamy keeps getting these high profile wide receivers on campus, but it's obviously tough to land them because one, you don't have NIL and wide receiver is a premium position. And two, Michigan has been, you know, run heavy offense the last couple of seasons. But with Kirk Campbell in as the new offensive coordinator, recruits have heard buzz that the offense is going to open up a little bit with some more passing. And so I'm curious to see does Campbell make a difference? Do, does Michigan pass the ball a little bit more during the spring game? Does that become more appealing to wide receiver recruits uh, like Meadows? So, you know, that's something that I'll be uh, watching closely this weekend as well. Um, all right, let's go to our next topic of conversation. And just a reminder, guys, if you want a question answered on tonight's show, hit that dollar symbol. It's a little box with a dollar symbol. That's a super chat that gets your uh, question answered on tonight's show. And also that money goes directly to our travel budget so we can continue to see top recruits across the country um, and Michigan's commits like Carter Smith. I was in Orlando 
over the weekend seeing on 300 Michigan quarterback commit Carter Smith at the Elite 11 Regional in Orlando. My first time at an Elite 11 seeing a Michigan commit since J.J. McCarthy, who's about to be drafted. So it's been a long time. So I was excited uh, to go out to Florida to get another look at Carter Smith. And, you know, um, he's really coming along as a passer for guys that aren't as familiar with Carter Smith. He is the reigning Gatorade player of the year in the state of Florida, a true dynamic dual threat quarterback who can make a lot of plays with his legs. Uh, and he's not just a guy that, you know, has the escape ability. Uh, he's a guy that you can design runs for. I, you know, I was uh, talking to him a little bit and, you know, we were talking about me covering Texas in the past and how Tom Herman ran kind of that power spread. And I was like, yeah, man, they're going to have to get you in on that, uh, on some quarterback power. And he was like, that's my favorite. You know, he loves uh, to run the football and he loves to run people over. He just loves the physicality of the game. Even during the Elite 11 event, um, you know, there was a break in between the two sessions. And I went over to him and I was like, Carter, looking pretty good, man. And he was like, I'm tired of this, man. Can't we get some helmets out here like he just loves football you know and, and he carter's a guy that isn't about um showcases or things of that nature that's why you know he dropped in the rankings in this ranking update so he's now out of the top 200 but that's in large part because nobody's really seen him except for me because he doesn't do any seven on seven he doesn't do any major camps outside of this elite 11 regional but instead of doing those types of things Carter has gone to a quarterback trainer uh, for the first time in his life to really correct some of the uh, weaknesses to his game. So like I mentioned, he is a dynamic player that loves football. Obviously, to win Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Florida is quite the accomplishment. To do it as a junior makes it even more impressive. But the thing or the knock on Carter has always been that he's not a polished passer, which he isn't. You know, he's a guy that had a lot of work to do from a mechanical standpoint, and from a footwork standpoint, you know, that was arguably the biggest thing was correcting his footwork. So, you know, instead of pouting like some other highly touted quarterbacks about getting dropped in rankings and things of that nature, Carter accepts the criticism. He doesn't do, you know, these media showcases. He goes out, he gets a, a quarterback trainer and Will Hewlett, who works with Brock Purdy of the San Francisco 49ers. And he's been working with him, you know, under the uh, cover of Darkness Hall offseason, um, getting better on that footwork, getting better from a mechanic standpoint. And that was easy to see at the Elite 11 Regional. Um, so, you know, I, I really thought Carter had a strong performance. I think he's continuing to improve as a pure passer every time I see him. And look, Carter's just a guy that didn't have that growing up you know he it, he wasn't like Jaden davis he wasn't like jj mccarthy both of those guys were name guys as middle schoolers that had the best quarterback training carter is all upside as a pure passer and you also have to keep in mind this is carter smith's first offseason that he fully dedicates himself to football um he was a major league baseball prospect he threw in the 90s as a sophomore and he gave up an opportunity to potentially make you know six figures right away as a as an mlb draft uh as an mlb draftee and gave that up to only pursue football so you know the this offseason has been completely different from his other off seasons because he's not playing baseball he's working with a private trainer he's fully locked in on owning his craft as a pure passer. So from an athletic standpoint, a dynamic athlete, he's been running in the four sixes um, all off season. He posted a, a faster laser 40 time than JJ McCarthy did at this elite 11 event. He's up to about 190 pounds right now. So he's listed at 175. He's at 187 right now. He's also going to work with a, an NFL uh, combine prep specialist to get better, um, you know, from a, from a testing standpoint, as well as a mental standpoint, he's going to get on the board, break down a lot of film. So Carter is fully focused on getting better and better. And like I said, I'm impressed every time I see him, I thought he should have gotten an invite on site. Um, you know, maybe an elite 11 invite will come later on, but either way, Michigan fans should be super excited about Carter Smith 
because he has he he has such a big ceiling, which you didn't see that really last cycle with Jaden Davis. Davis um, was obviously a very polished, accurate passer. And I'm not sure Smith will ever be that, but, you know, I, I think Smith can be accurate and polished enough. Uh, and you combine that with his ability to make plays in and around the pocket, to make plays um, just as a design runner at the quarterback position, something that Davis doesn't offer at all. Um, and I think that makes for a really, really exciting player. So if Kirk Campbell can maximize his talents, I think he has a lot to work with here. Michigan obviously knows how to evaluate him or, or evaluate and you know with Carter they took him while Bryce Underwood was still on the board so that tells you how much Michigan really uh, loves his ability and loves his potential now I've have uh, spoken for a long time Zach you never really get to talk about Carter Smith because you know Carter's my guy I guess I go see him all the time but you know uh, what's kind of your perspective on Carter Smith when you watch his junior film, you can see the baseball background. Um, you can see the high velocity. You can see the throwing motion. Um, when I watch your YouTube video, um, which you can find on this YouTube channel, um, about you know of, of Carter's clips, you can see the improvement, and that's based on you know having Brock Purdy's trainer. Um, I think his keep his head down doesn't really talk much you know, doesn't put his face in the limelight. You can see that he really cares about just improvement. I think he believes in his own self about the high ceiling and what he can get out of just having development be done at Michigan under Kirk Campbell. And I think how he is as a personality, because I've never seen him in person, but I've seen, you know, him doing interviews and all that. He's very, um, you know, at the very least, he is the he is dedicated to ensuring that Michigan continues its run when he's on the roster, and especially when that includes recruiting. Um, I think his recruiting efforts behind the scenes have been vast, especially when you talk to offensive linemen and even guys in the state of Florida. I think him being a leader and wanting to make sure that this class is arguably one of the best that Michigan has had this century. I think that is essential to have in a quarterback, a guy who wants to be a leader and a guy who wants to take efforts into his own hands. I think that's great to see. And if you're a Michigan fan, that's exciting to see. Yeah, I think with Carter um, as well, you know, that's a good point. You know, he wants to be a leader of this class. He's not the most social media present guy. You know, he's not always on Twitter or anything like that, um, but he is working hard to recruit guys behind the scenes. You know, he's been in contact with top offensive line targets like Avery Gash and Andrew Babalola. He's working hard on flipping uh, fellow Florida prospect Elijah Melendez, who had some great things to say about Carter. So, yeah, I mean, I think Carter's also just a character fit, you know, spending time with him and you see some of the Elite 11 highlights here. Um, spending time with him and his dad, you know, has been great. The last couple of times I've been out to Florida, uh, we actually, you know, were able to grab a bite at, at Chipotle after this event and just talking to them and getting to know them on a personal level um, has been awesome, man. I mean, I, I think Carter really embodies what Michigan is all about from a culture standpoint. He believes in the program. He believes in, in what Michigan can offer on and off the field, and he believes in the future as well and so you know i think carter is the first quarterback commit i've covered since jj that has really had that type of moxie and and personality and belief in the program and so again i'm super excited about carter i think michigan fans should be as well and by the way he will be on campus tomorrow and he will be staying through sunday as he gets an extended look at his future home and will help michigan recruit all the guys that are coming in midweek and for the spring game. All right, let's move on to our last topic and last call for Super Chats, guys. If you want a question answered on tonight's show, make sure to hit that little box with the money sign that uh, money goes directly to our travel budget. And obviously you get a question answered and also like this video and subscribe to our channel for free and subscribe to the Wolverine.com for $1 for one month. All right, there has been some movement on the on three recruiting prediction machine, Michigan trending heavily for four-star offensive lineman Avery Gash, uh, who we talk about frequently on this show. 
I've had a prediction in since November. Uh, our Michigan State reporter, Kenny Jordan, logged a prediction, and our new VP of recruiting, Steve Wilfong, also logged a prediction. Both of those predictions came on Monday off the uh, back of Gash's uh, visit to Michigan State over the weekend. Zach, you have not logged a prediction just yet, but you are the man that has been uh, in contact with Gash and his family for years now. Um, how are you feeling about this movement in favor of Michigan? I think Michigan is, I would say, the leader. Um, it is, there's a lot to like when you're a kid like Avery Gash, considering that he's been to Ann Arbor nine times, including twice in the spring, which has allowed him to build just as good of a bond with Grant Newsom, offensive line coach, as he's had with Jerome Moore over the course of 18, 20 months. Um, you know, he was there on April 7th, and then he went previously on March 22nd. So he's got an opportunity to not only meet with the coaches and talk with the staff, he's gotten to know the players very well. I mean, we've mentioned that Blake Frazier is one of them. Jake Winner is another. These guys have been not, you know, from the time that they were recruits to now, they're still pushing for Avery to remain in the Metro Detroit area. Um, you know, that's not to mention all the off field stuff that's offered in terms of like the Ross Business School. But yeah, I haven't put in a pick in just for the sake that, you know, I still think he's going to take it to June, um, to the summer. Um, you know, there, despite the, my feelings of Michigan being in the driver's seat, there's still schools that are um, keeping pushes alive. When, when it comes to Avery, especially now with Ohio State. Um, I think the the intel that came after his Michigan State visit, I'm not really sure where Michigan stands right now, but again, he is a legacy. So I still, you know, there's a lot that, Mich that Avery has garnered in terms of learning what Michigan can provide him. The family has gotten a great understanding. It's just a matter of how the Juno Vs are going to be. Um, I know that Michigan's going to get one. Um, the date hasn't been fi final, um, publicized, but I think that long weekend being with commits, other recruits who have high interest in Michigan, I feel like that will be the opportunity for Michigan to land arguably the best offensive lineman in the state of Michigan right now. I still feel really good about my prediction. Um, obviously, you know, others joining on only boost that confidence and um, you know, Zach has been pretty steady with reporting that Gash and his family plan to take it to June. I'm still hearing on my end, you know, that Michigan it feels like there is a window for them to maybe get Gash on board sooner than expected. You know, they're pushing to get him back on campus here potentially uh, for the spring game and before his official visit. So if that happens, you know, that could be another opportunity for Michigan, Michigan to close and look. You know, let's just face it, Michigan needs some momentum on the recruiting trail. They have been on a three-month drought, so they would love to get Gash uh, in the class now as opposed to, you know, letting him wait it out. So, you know, we'll see if Michigan can get that done. But, you know, whether he takes it to June or he decides sooner than that, you know, Michigan's in a great spot right now. Um, you know, Ohio State, like Zach said, is still – in there but uh you know just just not a lot of buzz with any other school outside of michigan so it just you know obviously makes a ton of sense um some more rpm movement here alex graham a long time michigan lean now trending to colorado um alex graham four star defensive back out of img academy by way of detroit a uh, guy that uh, played his first uh, couple of seasons at Cass Tech is a Michigan legacy. His mother attended Michigan. And Zach, both uh, you and myself, we put in early picks for Graham to end up at Michigan like a year ago. And now we have both flipped our picks to Colorado. Um, why is that the case? <laughs> he was just at Boulder. Um, you know, a number of days ago. Um, he, he's been this, you know, the Buffaloes have been a team that have been, from what I've been hearing, have just been a team that's been a constant in terms of recruiting him. Um, 
it's interesting. Obviously, this is a kid who's from the Detroit area. His mom went there. Michigan was his first offer. He's been to Ann Arbor on like nine official visits. But I feel like, you know, he had a great relationship with Steve Klingscale. Morgan was in contact as well. But when you look at, I guess, what Colorado can provide, I mean, you see the success off the field that, you know, the Sander, the Sander brothers and Travis Hunter have garnered um, the opportunity to play for the best NFL cornerback in the history of the league, you know, as their head coach. Um, you get an opportunity to travel out west, um, play in the Big 12. It's There's a lot of exposure when you get to Colorado. So that's always, you know, a positive. But, you know, this is a kid who I've had a prediction on for 18 months. But um, after, I guess, the last few days, my mind has changed. Um, yeah, you know, I think that visit to Colorado helped. Also, Dion, you know, has had success at IMG Academy. Last year, he pulled, you know, a five-star offensive lineman, Jordan Seaton, um, out of IMG. He also almost got Jordan Johnson, Rubel, out of uh, IMG. Uh, he obviously ended up signing with Texas, and, and Michigan was in that battle as well. But Colorado was right up there, too. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's he's had the success at IMG. I think he made a big impression on Graham. You know, obviously there was a lot of transition at Michigan this offseason. You know, I don't really know what Colorado does from an NIL perspective, but obviously, you know, they have some and they, you know, do a great job with marketing on social media and, and things of that nature. And Deion Sanders' resume as an actual player speaks for itself. So, you know, it's a it's an interesting turn in the grand recruitment. It is a really strong year in the secondary. So it'll be interesting to see who else pops up on Lamar Morgan's radar during the spring evaluation period, as well as who he prioritizes. You know, there's still a lot of um, defensive backs that are highly interested in Michigan from Dwayne Galloway to Jamari Deloach to Messiah Del Holmes. So, you know, there are still a lot of options out there depending on which way uh, Morgan decides to go. But this one was just a Really interesting one. And look, Michigan would have taken his commitment, you know, had he wanted to commit to Michigan this month. Um, but it looks like Colorado is uh, is now the clear favorite here. So, you know, it uh, it is what it is, I guess. Um, like I said, we uh, are not taking questions today because it is the Super Chat Show. And normally we have an off-topic question. Nobody asked an off-topic question today. So we'll, ask, we'll answer this guy's question because he's asked it um, like five or six times in this chat. And it's for you, Zach. Do you know Michigan exposure? So here you go, Tyree Smiley, who has been blowing up the chat box with this question. Do you know, do you know who Michigan exposure is? Zach? Yeah, he's uh, one of the big up and comers in state when it comes to high school football. Nice kid. Um, I think I see him at every event that I go to. Um, definitely a guy to follow if you, want to keep you know in touch with everything with high school football in, in this state there you go at least zach didn't come out and say yeah he's a bozo so shout out to yeah. nice. Nice. <laughs> very good follow for anybody who cares yeah about this state for high school football absolutely okay cool well anyway uh i will be back tomorrow to answer all of your questions on the wednesday show we can talk rankings and much more so make sure to like this video subscribe to our channel for free you can see carter smith's uh elite 11 highlights here exclusively on the channel and like i said i'll be back tomorrow and remember to subscribe to the wolverine.com for one dollar for one month